Mr. Sexy Worldwide is back in action. In the next 30 seconds, I'll tell you what's up. Child is a solid investment 5-star on-field enabler who dishes insane DPS via his skill and burst, adapting to both AoE and single target scenarios. Child's skill applies a mark called Riptide on enemies, which triggers Riptide slash when hit in melee stance. For more comfortable rotations, use this. He can be played as either an on-field or burst DPS, plus he has a signature weapon and set tailor made for him. But are they necessary? And his best partner in crime is none other than Shangling Impact. Hold it! Still more to go. Tar Tar Taglia's best team is no doubt international, which isn't a surprise for the man who's been all over to that. And although he launches off a giant whale, his cons don't seem all too spicy. But most importantly, he's the most attractive ginger to have ever lived. I'm in Ireland, I get a free pass. Does this mean your handsomely traumatized war criminal is ready to end countries? Not quite yet, he still hits like a Fatui housewife. But today, I'll teach you how to get there. Feel free to use the marks on the timeline to navigate to the chapter you want to see in this guide. My name is Juice, and that was the Fresh Squeeze. Let's get into it. Okay, first off, let's start with his talents. Please bear with me here, since his kit is fairly dense. His normal attacks, on their own, deal 6 shots of physical damage. His charge shot will fire off a Hydro Arrow upon enemies, which will apply Riptide upon them. Riptide looks like this on enemies. Riptide will deal AoE Hydro damage to enemies when attacked by Child. The kind of Riptide that is triggered will depend on how Child attacks the enemy. This is considered normal attack damage. First, Riptide Flash. When Child shoots a charged Hydro shot upon an enemy with Riptide marked on them, he will trigger some consecutive AoE Hydro damage upon the enemy. This can only occur once every 0.7 seconds. Then Riptide Burst. When Child defeats an enemy with the Riptide effect, a Hydro Burst is popped, which applies Riptide to nearby enemies. If you hit an enemy with Riptide when his normals are Hydro infused by his skill, doing a melee hit upon an enemy will trigger Riptide Slash, which deals some AoE Hydro damage. But damage from Riptide Slash is considered skill damage, and can only occur once every 1.5 seconds. His Riptide Flash and Riptide Burst do not snapshot buffs. We will go into detail as to what snapshotting is in the skill section. Child's Charge Shot is good to use as filler in rotations to trigger some extra Riptides on the enemy. You can also fire off a Charge Shot, either Hydro or Physical, and apply Riptide by quickly switching into his skill form before his arrow lands on the enemy. Now, we're going to talk about his skill. But first, let's hear out from Mike about our sponsor, Final Fantasy. Hello here, this is Mike. I have journeyed through over 15 MMORPGs in the past decade, and I can tell you the key elements that make an MMORPG great. Pay to win or play to win, PvE and PvP grinding and end game experiences. Final Fantasy XIV is play to win, no pay to win nonsense here. All you need is a subscription and from there it's a fair game. Your success depends on the effort, knowledge, strategy and skills, whilst you can even try Final Fantasy XIV for free, up to level 60 and the Heavensward expansion with unlimited game time. And if you decide to upgrade, your progress carries over. The storyline? Absolutely gripping. And the grind? It's a thrilling journey with just the right balance, not too long, not too short, just the way we like it. Final Fantasy XIV PvE offers an exceptional challenge, packed with mechanics and PvP's Wolf's Den system keeps you on your toes, blending strategy, mechanics and adrenaline. Endgame content? Final Fantasy XIV has it all, most importantly the latest update patch 7.0, Don't Trail expansion that has been revealed in NA FanFest at Las Vegas with an upgrade for graphics, gears, new world content, new raids, dungeons and much more. Plus, the job system lets you play all jobs on a single character, no need to create multiple characters. In essence, these four cornerstones create the MMORPG experience we need, and Final Fantasy XIV ticks all these boxes, and then there's these insane rewards. Ready to jump in? Check the link in the description. Alright, let's get back to Tiffany. Alright, thank you Mike. Yes guys, I really think you should try Final Fantasy XIV's new patch 7.0. I believe it offers a whole new world of update. When you press his skill, he will enter melee stance, and all of his normal attacks and charged attacks will be converted into hydro damage and be considered skill damage. Therefore, the levels of his normals have no effect on his melee stance, normal and charged attacks. Buffs like Heart of Depth passive or Yunjin's burst, however, will still work. By the way, Child is unable to perform plunge attacks in melee stance. 
during his skill, using his normal for perform, up to six consecutive hydro strikes and his charge attacks will turn into so-called hydro cross slashes. Either after 30 seconds, or after you activate his skill again, he will return to ranged mode. The longer a child is in melee mode, the longer his skill cooldown will be when it ends. As for how long you should be in melee stance with child, it depends. Here is a table courtesy of KQM on how long child's cooldowns are at C0 with certain durations, and how long that rotation would chalk up to be. Bold text is how long you should aim for. If you have C1 child, then here's another table which displays his skill duration, cooldown, and rotation length. Once again, bold text is how long you should aim for. If you want to know how long his durations can be with every second spent, Inside his melee stance, here's a table for that too. Also courtesy of KQM. There are a few other factors which affect how long you'd want to be in child's melee form for. Hit lag, for instance. Hit lag is a mechanic which stops your attack animation to make your hits feel more weighted and immersive. Your hits literally do lag. Every melee hit ch child does has hit lag, and every time hit lag occurs, child's melee timer is stopped too, so this means that your melee duration is slightly longer than what the game's UI would indicate. This means that you can stay in child's melee stance for about a second and a half longer to a second longer. This happens, in general, only to sword, claymore, and polearm users. A great example is the ride in Shogun's Burst. It is a fixed duration of 7 seconds, but hit lag can extend that up to 8 or even 9 seconds. For child, this is an incredibly high skill timing technique to pull off which doesn't change much for the effort level required. Instead, an easier option is to use visual cues. First off is Child's Burst. His burst has a 15 second cooldown, so if you have 6 seconds left on the clock, you know you've been in his melee stance for 9 seconds. Second off is Bennett's Burst Duration. You can either exit his melee stance when Bennett's Burst fades away, or when his buff ends, because Bennett's Burst buff lasts an extra 2 seconds after his burst disappears. But when C4 plus Shangling's burst ends, the duration of her burst and rotations lines up with how long you should stay in child's melee stance. During child skill cooldown, there's a few goals to achieve. The main thing you want to do during this period is refresh any buffs in your team, generate energy for your teammates, and to set up any reactions such as swirl or apply pyro to prepare for child to vaporize everything. You also want to snapshot any buffs onto your characters, before you go back into child skill form. For those of you who don't know what snapshotting is, it's a mechanic that only a few characters have, such as Shang Ling for example. Units who can snapshot are able to bake buffs into their abilities for their entire duration, such as Bennett's attack buff for example. They maintain the buff even after it's expired on field. For Shang Ling, pay attention to how much damage he does without the buff, and then look at how Shang Ling got buffed by Bennett's burst but still maintains the buff damage even after his circle has disappeared. This burst will be different depending on what stance child is in when cast it. There is a range stance and melee stance. His range stance burst shoots off a large AoE hydro arrow which applies riptide upon enemies and also restores 20 of child's burst energy back to him. His melee stance burst performs a large AoE slash which deals massive hydro damage to all nearby enemies which triggers riptide blast. Riptide blast will cause enemies to have their riptide mark cleared off of them and will trigger a hydro explosion which deals AoE hydro damage. This is considered burst damage and does not snapshot. Skip back earlier for an explanation on snapshotting. Each have their own pros and cons when using them. His range burst has a low energy recharge requirement which we'll cover more in depth in the ER requirements section. It only has a 1 second animation, can be used during child skills downtime, it easier to vaporize, and can more consistently fit into child's rotations. However, it deals lower damage than his melee stance burst. His melee burst deals higher damage, his riptide blast, his quadratic scaling, and for those of you who don't know, regular AoE is as if you have a toy gun that can shoot at three different targets at the same time, but only has rubber bullets, and after the bullets hit an enemy, they just drop to the ground. Three bullets, three hits, three times the damage of one bullet. But then compare that to a water balloon gun that can throw water balloons at the three targets. Every time a balloon hits one target, it will create a splash that also hits the two neighboring targets. So it doesn't matter if you throw them all at once or one by one, everybody will get hit. And the splash damage will deal the same damage as the original hit. So all in all, you will have 9 hits from just 3 balloons. And 9 hits means 9 times the damage, instead of 3 from a rubber bullet gun. With 4 enemies, it will be 16 hits and so on. So you can see why this type of damage is so busted. 
In the case of Charles, this is exactly the reason why you see a billion damage numbers popping up if you manage to clump enemies close enough together. It's also good for speedruns if you're into that. However, it has significantly higher ER requirements, it's more difficult to vaporize due to stance changes, and wastes 2 seconds of Charles' melee duration. You have to invest in a lot more energy recharge if you want to burst every rotation with Child's Melee Burst. Because of this, you miss out on valuable attack percent and crit damage substats. This makes his range burst perform better by around 15-20% to overall in consistent rotations. You also waste some Hydro Application by missing out 2 more seconds of melee attacks. His range burst is easier to slot in during downtimes, and it's easier to land a vaporize hit with it. When you activate Child's skill, some strong Hydro will be applied upon the enemy. So this means that his skill activation could steal the vapor away from his burst, leaving you with a weak, unvaporized burst. There's only a few scenarios where you should use Child's Melee Burst to finish off a final wave of enemies or finish off a boss in Abyss 1232, which can increase your overall DPS by 5%. There's speedrunning for highly invested players who want to clear chambers as fast as possible, or if you're using another Hydro with Child, which is highly unlikely considering how good Child's Hydro application is, I'd say you avoid using this as a conventional method. Let's take a look at his ascension passives. His A1 is simple. It just extends the duration of Child's Riptide Mark on enemies by an extra 8 seconds. At base, it's only 10 seconds, so with his A1 it becomes 18 overall. Nice quality of life, nothing more. His A4 is what ties Child's kit together and makes him feel complete. Every time you crit within his Child's melee stand to his normals or charges, Child will apply Riptide upon an enemy. Pre A4, your child can only apply Riptide via his charge shots or his range burst. His utility passive isn't that important. Nobody in his best teams uses normals regularly, and he himself only gains a tiny charge shot increase and Riptide burst damage increase. That burst increase only happens if you manage to kill your enemies with this burst. So slightly conditional too. Now we understand child's kit, let's talk about his talent priorities. For his melee focus, you want to level his skill first, burst second, and normals last. You can switch between upgrading his skill and burst until you've reached your desired talent level. You don't have to level his normals much for the aforementioned reason discussed of his utility passive, but you can level it up to 6 at a minimum. For his burst focus, level his burst first, skill second, and normals last. His burst is incredibly strong, with enough investment, can one-shot certain content. If you're interested in playing child primarily for his burst, this is the way to go. Amazing. Now we've discussed all his talents. Now let's optimize your child's gameplay in the combo section. Before we dive into that, if you're enjoying the content, why not consider liking and subscribing? Maybe even leaving a cool comment down below. If you don't, the child might be paying you a visit as a toy salesman tomorrow. Don't say I didn't warn you. Welcome to combos. Now let's discuss his most optimal attacking patterns. First off, N means normal, C means charge attack, and numbers in front of them mean how much you should do. For example, N2C means 2 normal attacks into 1 charge attack. His available melee strings are N1C all the way to N5C, or just N6, which is normal attacking 6 times without weaving in any charge. Here's a table courtesy of KKM on how efficient each combo is in terms of stamina consumption with different cancel methods. N3C is Child's most tried and true combo which is generally the most effective for the majority of his weapons. However, you can employ N4C or just generally any amount more of normal attacks if you're playing him on Rust, which reduces his charge attack damage. You generally aren't going to play N6 much, nor will you play N1C due to stamina consumption. N2C, N3C, and N5C are all his most preferred combos. There's also the Ball's Jiggle combo. When you shoot out an arrow with Child, you wait until his Jiggle ICD concludes and watch his balls bounce. It's very exhilarating. Now let's move on to his energy recharge requirements. Here we are at Child's energy recharge requirements. How much you need depends on whether you're interested in bursting every rotation with his ranged or melee stance burst. With his ranged burst, you can get away with only 100 to 110% ER. This is because of the energy that the burst restores by itself. Child also only has a burst cost of 60, which is actually quite low. However, despite how low that burst cost is, if you want to burst every rotation with his melee stance burst, then you're looking at ER costs of around 150 to 170 percent. Child generates energy via his riptides. He has an ICD or internal cooldown for energy generation. ICD means an artificial limit the game places on how much a character can do a certain thing, such as an ICD on how much hydro they can apply or how much energy they can generate in a few seconds. No matter what, you can't generate energy more than once every three seconds of child. It doesn't matter what kind of riptide you trigger on him, this doesn't mean you'll generate energy every three seconds of him though. 
rather once every 3.5 to 4 seconds due to hit lag and its attack animations. You'll gain an energy particle once every 2 riptides. He'll also gain one energy particle upon activating his skill nearby an enemy, but then you won't be able to gain for another for the next three seconds. For some more specifics on how much energy child can generate from different parts of his kit, take a look at this table here, courtesy of GekuM. Child also makes me feel like I'm full of energy when I look at him. My burst is always ready. Now, why don't we move on to artifacts? Let's discuss best boy child's best artifacts options. Four Piece Heart of Death was tailor made for Child specifically. This set only covers 50% of the damage that Child's kick can do, since it only focuses on its normals and charts. So the longer you melee, the more you yield out of this set. This is also the set I personally use on my Child, having spent 8.1k plus resin on the domain in lifetime to get my set. It's a huge resin investment to get his full four piece set since it doesn't cover any of his burst damage. It's generally wiser just to farm for a two piece HOD set and pair with another two piece set. We do know this is in the strong box nowadays, so it is easier to get your hands on. I farmed it when it wasn't. Shimanawa's Reminiscence is only 4% worse than 4 piece Heart of Depth, but after 2 plus rotations it falls off due to the energy stealing mechanics of the set. You'll need about 140% ER if you want to use a range burst in every rotation on it, but it's better than HOD by 5% in content which can be cleared in one rotation, so speedrunners can consider this one. Once again, it's just smarter to farm this as a 2 piece set for child. Same as before. It's, this is in the strong box now, so it's easier to obtain than ever. 4-piece Nymph's Dream can actually contest highly against 4-piece Heart of Depth and is in fact better than it by quite a fair bit. However, if you already have a very powerful Heart of Depth set, then you don't have to farm this set from scratch due to resin inefficiency, but it is generally his strongest pick. 2-piece Hydro Percent and 2-piece Attack Percent mix and match sets are viable in both low and high investment child since it focuses on both his melee and burst damage. It's also easier to get quality substats on, so not a bad choice if you don't have a full 4-piece. 2-piece Hydro Percent and 2-piece Noblesse is good for high investment child who can front load all their damage in one big intense burst. This can actually be child's best set in the Abyss due to how insanely powerful child's vaporized burst can be. However, if you can't one-shot enemies, then this set falls off quite a bit. 4-piece Thunder Suver only works for electrocharged child teams, but it's only about one substat stronger than Heart of Depth in this team. And if you're using Bennett, when it's actually worse than Heart of Death. I wouldn't recommend farming for a strong boxing this set specifically, and if you want to play Child as a burst DPS, then you have to farm for an entirely new set. 4-piece Blizzard Strayer can actually be Child's best set in freeze teams if the enemies he's hitting are frozen. Otherwise, this is just kind of gimmicky, and Child's freeze teams tend to not be a strong suit anyway. Just play him on Heart of Death here. In terms of main stats, you want your melee DPS Child to have an attack percent stance, hydro bonus goblet, and a crit rate or damage circlet. You get away from an attack percent goblet in some scenarios due to him ascending with hydro damage bonus. Melee DPS substats are as follows. However, for a burst DPS child, EM becomes more of a priority. Generally, the main change you'll make is that if you're playing him on an EM weapon, then play him with attack percent sounds, and if you're playing him on an attack percent weapon, then play him with an EM sounds. Substat priority remains the same, unless you need slightly more EM, in which case chase more EM over attack percent. Now let's move along to weapons. Before we do, let me just take a quick moment to say why not consider following my Twitter. I'll be posting daily about Genshin and Star Rail, and if you'd like to chat, why not stop by my Discord server? All links will be down in the pinned comment in the description below. Weapons for favorite murderously handsome ginger. First off, let me show you two sheets courtesy of Kikiam on child's best weapons in his common international setup. First, here with Sucrose. And now, here with Kazuha. Let's delve into things. Polar Star is Child's best in slot weapon. Fairly simple. It's worth noting that Child's optimal combo with his kit becomes this. This is so that you can make the most of its passive. Just note that if your Child's artifacts are more geared towards crit rate, then its bow might not actually be the best for your Child specifically. You want to gear him towards. Thundering Pulse is the way to go if your Child has plenty of crit rate subs. Fantastic choice for Child, and to take advantage of the weapon properly, use this combo. Skyward Harp is a decent general use bow on Child, and it's only slightly worse than Thundering Pulse. You also don't have to optimize your gear in any specific direction with this weapon, which makes it an ideal all-rounder to use. Aqua Simulacra is a weapon I used on my Child for a long time before switching to Polar Star, and it's absolutely fantastic. 
passive is perfect since you'll always be up close and personal with enemies, and the lower base attack is generally fine since you tend to play child with Bennett. Just be wary of how far you're standing with child when shooting off as a ranged burst, since you might not activate the weapon's passive then. Also, remember to optimize your stats towards crit rate. Amos' bow is actually quite underrated on child. Yes, with all the eternal attack percent you get on child via Bennett, attack percent sans, pyro res in his most typical comps and more, this weapon substat might appear redundant. But actually, if you aim for a ton of crit on your subs and don't chase attack percent as much, then this weapon's not too shabby whatsoever. You just generally wouldn't use Hunter's path on child very much. Yes, you can stick it on him as a burst DPS since it does take advantage of some EM there, but child needs a balance between attack percent and EM, so he doesn't fully take advantage of this weapon. Nice crit rate stat stick though. The first great magic's an alright weapon, but pretty much never get to take full advantage of its passive, but the crit is nice and he gets some use out of it, so it's not a completely bad option. Just don't pull it specifically for him. Viridescent Hunt helps in utilizing Child's quadratic scalings, since it allows him to group up his enemies using the weapon's passive. Nice crit rate stat stick too, but otherwise in single target scenarios, this guy falls off a little. Moon's Moon is solid. Since it buffs Child's burst by quite a bit, seeing as how energy hungry his team can be, especially at higher refinements. This thing can shine through. Child's burst makes up 30 to 40% of his DPS every rotation, so don't sleep on this bad boy. The thing with Rust is that while it might look pretty on paper, it forces you to change Child's rotation to look more like this. And it debuffs charge attacks. Normals don't make up the majority of Child's DPS. In fact, his charge make up half of the DPS he deals in melee mode. Not using charge with child decreases his melee form DPS by about 30%, which is nasty. But if you have nothing else, or you just like how cool it looks on him, then it suffices. Hamayumi is a nice free to play craftable, but don't bother refining this for child since your energy will pretty much never be at 100%. His burst simply provides too much valuable DPS to the table. If you have Prototype Crescent's passive active, then it's actually fairly good and can match up to R1 Amos, otherwise, it's mid and is just a nice pick if you're free to play without another choice. Stringless for a traditional DPS child is whatever, but if you're nuking with him, then the EM provision of passive is incredible for the burst damage. This weapon is extremely popular among nukers for a reason, since it even ranks up against some of child's overall strongest options in that kind of scenario. Slingshot only affects child's charge shots and won't be buffing his melee DPS whatsoever. This is just a dirt cheap option for free to play as you have nothing else, but it'll outclass all of the ER bows and support oriented bows in terms of DPS. That being said, don't bother with any bow which is more tailored for supports. It'll barely do anything for child. Now, a war criminal part of the Russian Mafia certainly must have some connections. With that being said, let's delve into his teams. Teammates, they're actually pretty straightforward for child. You just can't talk child without international. This is of course his best team, but not only is this his best team, it's the best team in the game. This team is comprised of child, the infamous Shangling, Bennett, and then either Kazuha or Sucrose. Child International specifically beats out all of her forms of international in terms of power, it's better than Hyperbloom teams, and somehow literally cannot be countered in Abyss. This team is immortal. The main reason for this is because if you're facing enemies with pyro shields or pyro enemies, Child is quick to take advantage and steal free vapes off of them, and can clear them off quickly. If an enemy is made of Hydro, then that's free food for Shangling and Bennett. This team is also incredible because it's excellent in both single target and AoE. While this team is mostly fantastic in AoE, Child can easily burst down bosses with incredible power and a highly invested Changling can even one cycle bosses in Abyss with Child. It's incredible. Changling also just happens to be Child's best partner in crime, with Child's cooldown synergizing perfectly with the duration of Child's Pyronado, and Child being able to apply enough Hydro for Changling's lightning fast pyro application. And yes, that does lead me to believe that Child is one of the most valuable units in the game for both free to plays and high investment players. This team has an incredibly high ceiling the potential to upgrade it for external means, such as getting Kazuha C2 or activating Bennett C6. There's also a nice unique mechanic in this team called Double Swirl. If Kazuha, get close to an enemy of Child, presses E, then swap off to Bennett and use his burst. The Hydro Aura Child applies is so strong, but he doesn't immediately vaporize it. And then swirl it with Kazuha, and voila, now both your Child and Shineling have their DPS buffed. And for Sucrose, you want to Guoba Swirl instead. Have Hydro applied upon the enemy in the same way, and then when Guoba has a little exclamation mark up here above his head, he becomes pyro infused. Quickly swirl the elements of Sucrose and kaboom, Hydro and Pyro are both swirled for you now. Child can also apply the wet status to me simply any time I look at him, man. As for whether Sucrose or Kazuha is better, with a C6 Sucrose and a C0 Kazuha, they're relatively the same here. The team appreciates Sucrose, but at C2, Kazuha outclasses Sucrose by around 20%. 
as he's then able to provide 200 EM to the team, and likewise will increase the damage percent buff he provides to the team. However, note that in order for Sucrose to be as good, this is going to require a lot of skill on your end. Otherwise, Kazuha is far better in practice if Sucrose is not utilized properly. The only true two weaknesses of this team is how much effort you have to put into learning how to play it, and that Shangling is a solar panel in terms of how much energy funneling she needs. Then again, there is another hidden weakness, and that's how much investment both your child and Shangling need. You're gonna want to optimize both of them well if you want to make the most out of this team. International is pretty much the best team in the game, so I honestly wouldn't recommend playing child in any other teams, but there are a few other options for those who want to experiment with their child a little more. Well, now you've built your ideal Shinez Nyan army, why don't we dive into his constellation value? Child summons a big whale, so that obviously means he's a whale too, right? Let's see if his constellations are worth pulling for. This con is mostly just utility based, allowing you to play a bit more imperfectly with child and can let you optimize your rotations to suit whatever buffs and sets you're running in your team, such as 4 piece archaic Petra for example, where you can try and get a bit more hydro application out of it, a 9% increase from C0. You honestly don't gain much from this, since you'll already be overflowing with energy if you play him against AoE content, and you'll be lacking in energy trying to employ this against bosses or chambers with a few enemies. A 0% DPS increase. This is a nice 18% DPS increase for child, stop here if you're a traditional melee DPS child enjoyer. This con is actually risky to use. No yes, it might look good on paper, but hear me out. When you set up a pyro aura by swapping into a pyro unit and then swap into child to pull off some vapes, that takes about 2.5 seconds. If this C4 procs during that time, your vape is stolen and your burst will just be raw hydro damage. So while this can increase your DPS by 8% theoretically, it can also reduce it by 2% on the other hand. A 5% DPS increase overall for child, but it's fairly nice if you're into burst DPS child. Also worth mentioning that in practice, this is his best con. You've seen some bad cons, I'm sure, but nothing is as garbage as this con. It literally can change nothing about child if you can clear everything in realm rotation. Otherwise, this literally just gives you quality of life by letting you do more mistakes. This can legitimately just be a 0% DPS increase once again. Whew, okay. So for Vertical Investment Child, get C4 Zhangling first, and consider C6 Bennett. Go for C2 Kazuha, then Polar Star. If you want Freedom Sworn, sure, go for it. I'm going to chew your ankles if you try going for Child Cons. But if you're fine with your kneecaps potentially disappearing, then stop at C3. So to see truly, Child is one of my top favorite Genshin Impact characters as a whole. Everything about this guy appeals. He is legitimately one of the greatest units in the game, plus he just so happens to be the greatest Husbando material of all time. Whether you choose to invest in him a lot or barely at all, he just casually gives you access to one of the strongest teams in the game. He may not be a jack of all trades, but he isn't just a master of one, he's a true legend of one. However, as much as I advocate for him, remember that there's plenty of national variants nowadays, and while none of them may hold a candle to Child International, know that if you're interested in playing Child, you should know that he is tied to this team. Well then, this has been Juice signing out, and I wish you all a day as thrilling as child gameplay.